All right, so these are some of the topics that we're going to be covering today, um, or all of the topics we're going to be covering. Uh, so make sure that we've got enough time to get through everything. Uh, we should be good on time, though. All right, let's go and get started into uh, the meat of it here. So this is uh, the first uh, items that we're going to be looking at is uh, new alignment options for uh, Dimension Palette. Uh, all of you might remember they added the Dimension Palette a few releases ago. Um, shows up uh, next to your dimensions when you're working in a drawing. Um, they've added a few uh, new uh, alignment options. Uh, I'll sh bring this up in, in SOLIDWORKS here and stuff, but uh, also on the same uh, uh, note here, we're also going to look at the uh, auto arrange as well, too. So they've definitely uh, improved the uh, um, dimension, so we don't have to spend as much time uh, uh, getting our drawings uh, set. So I think for those that still have to do lots of drawings, this will be a, a big help for you guys. All right, so I've got a, a, a drawing, roughed out uh, dimensions on there. Uh, we always run into this where we have uh, stuff cluttered all over the place. Um, well, let me go ahead and show the uh, auto dimension real quick. Um, I'm just going to draw a selection box going around uh, my dimensions here and get all those selected. Uh, I can also hold control and pick up any dimensions that I don't have, uh, or I can hold control again to unselect ones that I don't want to be part of the selection. Um, but to get to the dimension palette, I come to this little icon that shows up near my cursor and that pops up. I'm going to do that one more time here so you can see all that get those added in and then I just bring my cursor over the top of that icon. Uh, the auto dimension is this new button right here. I just go in uh, our auto arrange I guess I should say. So I just hit that button uh, and that quick it spaced all my dimensions for me. Uh, so from there if I want to go through and I want to make some adjustments I can go and grab my dimensions again or if I was still in there I could have gone there. Uh, but this scroll bar down at the bottom, if I drag that, it allows me to actually adjust the spacing uh, off of a, a rough percentage number, but I can actually increase or decrease. Let's move this off to the side here. You can see it a little bit better. Uh, so I can actually scroll that and, and change the spacing a little bit. Uh, so that's, I think, right there is a, a huge enhancement from what it used to be. Um, let's go and take a look at some of the ones on the, the side here. Again, I'll come uh, over to my dimension palette expand that out. Uh, there are a few other ones over here. We've got uh, space evenly linear or radi radial. Uh, we also mostly use for if you're doing like a section view. Uh, align collinear, uh, align stagger. Uh, some of these look good, some of them don't look good depending on what your how your dimensions are, are arranged. Uh, so like if I grab that one you can kind of see that they all piled up on each other still. Uh, arrange them left or right. Uh, so I could actually line them all up that way, or I could come back over here and auto space them and then increase the uh, dimension a little bit. Uh, so they've definitely made some some improvements there. Uh, one other thing I want to point out: if I grab my smart dimension and I go and put a, another dimension in here, say from there to maybe to this bottom of the the fillet there. Uh, well, let's go and give ourselves another sketch point here, maybe something that that's uh, a little bit uh, more detail. So we'll put another point maybe at the midpoint there that we wanted to call out. So I'll go into dimension from here to there. Uh, if I let it jump over to the side, you'll see that it actually will uh, make sure that we've got room for it. Uh, if it did need to move them, it would shift them over. Uh, so that there's one uh, definite advantage for the uh, uh, dimension. Uh, so that's definitely improved. Again, that's on the dimension palette, so make sure that you do have that turned on. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next item here. All right, so uh, actually we've got uh, bounding box uh, sketch for sheet metal. Uh, I'll go and show you where that's at and how how that comes on. Uh, and then we also have cutlass properties and drawings. Uh, this shows up for um, uh, weldments and also sheet metal. Uh, so we can get a, a wealth of information uh, showing up in there. Uh, I think most of it is probably more beneficial for the sheet metal side of things. Uh, let's All right, so let's go and uh, take a look at SOLIDWORKS here and open up uh, a next item here. All right, so we're going to open up our 
drawing here that we've created. Uh, where the bounding box option to turn that on shows up, uh, let's go and right click over our drawing view. So I'm uh, over the view but not over the part itself. I'm going to come down to uh, the properties. And it shows up as an extra check mark uh, down here at the bottom. Last, uh, we've always seen the, the, the check mark there for the sheet metal bend notes, uh, but then we also have the uh, display bounding box. Uh, so that's now a new check mark. Uh, so, what that does, uh, if we look at our tree here, uh, go digging down into our part, if we look at our now well, let's see, it's a, oh, wrong view here. Let's go to the, the view that's correlating to our flat pattern. That would make a little more sense. Uh, so we have our same sketch that we were looking at for our bend lines, so that also still shows up under our flat pattern. Uh, but now we have that new sketch uh, uh, for the, uh, the bounding box there as well. Uh, key thing with it is when it creates it, uh, it'll figure out whatever the smallest bounding box would be. Uh, but if you do need to, to align it, uh, you would want to set the grain of it. In fact, let's go ahead and open up the uh, the part here and take a look at it. All right, so as you can see, I'm over on my flat pattern uh, configuration there, so that's the one that's currently active. And let's see, so I can actually uh, hide the sketch if I don't want it, uh, and then, like I said, when during the uh, the creation of it, you can also set the the grid or the grain uh, for it as well. Okay, so we'll go and switch that back here. Uh, the next item is the uh, cut list uh, properties and drawing. Uh, that's this uh, level of information here. We're getting the size of the bounding box, uh, material thickness. These are all integrator or built in. Uh, information. Uh, if we double click on that, you can see the, the individual information that's coming from that part file. So it does have its own uh, header information. Uh, but the way we create that box, I'm going to delete mine here, is I'll go and uh, select the view there. And I'm going to go up into the annotations menu. So view. My mistake. I'm, there's so many different annotations. I'm forgetting where I'm at here. So I right-click over the view there, come down to annotations, uh, and uh, let's see. Oh, that's the other thing that I've been finding is uh, if you select anything. So if you have something selected by accident, so it looks like I've got that bounding box. I want to click off of it, and then come just over the edge of the view. Now come to annotations. There's my cut list property. So make sure you don't have anything selected. Click out of the view just right click over the view itself uh, and then you'll get that cut list uh, properties. So we pick that and then attach to our cursor is the, the full display of, of information there. Okay. All right. Let's see. Next item on our list of stuff to cover today. We've got uh, center marks in assembly uh, drawings. Uh, so it used to be that you could only get center tick marks to show up on part files. Uh, now we can actually uh, bring center tick marks of holes that are created at the assembly level. So if we have like a post-process operation, you get a bolt in, you want to drill a hole into it, but you're doing that at the assembly level. Uh, we want to get the, the center tick mark to show up in there. Uh, another one also here is we've got the uh, uh, cosmetic threads now. Uh, you can actually configure them. The and this is uh, internal or external, uh, and we'll go into to this a little bit once we get the uh, one of the parts open here, so we can take a look at that. All right, so let's see. Let's close out of some of this stuff, and we'll come back to a couple of these uh, here in a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna grab. grab this assembly. Uh, you can see that I've made a, a couple of cuts uh, on this couple of different parts up here at the assembly level. Uh, I'll go and uh, make a drawing. And I'm going to go 
and drop in my top view there. And the default behavior in your template, it does not have that turned on. So you can see that I don't have the tick marks. Uh, so if I delete my view there, go into my options. Okay. Uh, if you haven't seen 2011 also, it, it, the interface hasn't changed too much. Uh, they have added a few extra icons like our file properties. Uh, so rather than having to go to the file menu and properties here, uh, they've given us a, a button here on the toolbar. Uh, a lot of the other stuff is still the same, so from 2008 uh, all the way up to, to 9 and 10. So, All right, so go into my options. I'm going to switch over to my document properties. And again, this is document properties. Anything on this tab is stuff that's... Uh, uh, template specific, so you'd want to open up your drawing template if you wanted this to, to be set this way. Uh, we're going to go into the detailing group. And over here on the right, we have our center uh, marks for assembly. So we could turn that on there. We could also do it for fillets or even slots uh, as well. Don't have any of those for, for this particular drawing, but we're going to turn that on. Come back over to my views, refresh them here a little bit. So I can get my top view again, go and drag and drop that back in. And now I get my center tick marks in there. So pretty useful, uh, especially if you're going to be doing any of that post-process type stuff. Uh, let's go and take a look at the uh, next item on our list here, the cosmetic threads. All right, so we're going to open up another part here. All right, so this, uh, I've already applied a cosmetic thread to it, but just as a refresher, uh, so you guys can remember how to do that. Um, I always tend to, to pre-select uh, uh, an edge first, and that's just my habit. Um, and then I go into my uh, insert menu, come down to annotations, and then I go and grab cosmetic thread. That's how you would get in there. Uh, so I've already dropped one in. Uh, but to edit one, all I have to do is select on the, uh, the dashed ringer or the cosmetic thread itself, and it gives me the ability of edit feature. Okay. Uh, some of the things that you may not be aware of if you haven't used cosmetic thread is you can pick out a predefined standard. Okay. Uh, or the new item is the fact that if I leave it set to none, uh, I can actually call out the, uh, the thread manually. So I could actually drop that inf or type that information in uh, to the cosmetic thread, accept it. Uh, and it gets stored with the information uh, information of this uh, cosmetic thread. Um, one other thing to point out is that it can be controlled in your design tables. Uh, so if I have a design table, go ahead and edit here. Don't need to make any changes. All right, so if we look at it, we actually have the ability of bringing in the information to populate that for our design table. So we can actually fill in our table for all of our different configurations uh, and have that populate. Uh, you can read it across the top there as far as the, uh, the formatting. Uh, if you do need this, uh, the format um, after this webcast, uh, I believe it does show up in the um, uh, help menu, what's new, and then in either the PDF or the HTML. Uh, under this uh, section for the cosmetic threads. Uh, so look in the, the What's New guide for that format there. Uh, let's go and uh, do one more thing here. Uh, let's go and drop this into a drawing. And I'll go and drop in uh, maybe the current view there. And you can see right away drops in that information for us uh, to, to have that cosmetic thread call out. Okay. All right, let's go on to the next item here. All right, so we have a few on this page. Um, first one is uh, being able to get the, uh, the scale to show up on a uh, uh, orthogonal view, uh, so that's something new, and it is uh, linked to it, so it does update uh, when you uh, change your, your view scale. Uh, I'll show that here in a moment. Uh, while we're on the slide, I do want to point out uh, one thing that they're, I guess, noting in the What's New Guide. It's, it's not uh, a big highlight, but it's the fact that our drawing sheet formats have actually shifted location. 
uh, for those that are still using Windows XP, uh, it would be in this location. Uh, version, obviously, if you're doing 2011, that would be replaced there. Uh, language, uh, ling, language, and then sheet format. Uh, if you're using Vista or Windows 7, uh, we'd be looking in this location. Uh, mind you, the application data directory and the program data directory are normally hidden by default for uh, Windows, so you do need to show those. Uh, if you're in a, a My Computer window, you go to Tool Menu, Options, and then View tab, and then you can show those hidden files and folders. So, um, Next item to, to point out uh, on this one, the same slide here, uh, we have dual dimensions uh, for chamfers. Uh, so this is uh, something that's really useful there, and we'll go and bring that up on the drawing as well. All right, so let's get back to SolidWorks here. And we're going to open up one of our drawings back here again. All right, so uh, this is the uh, the orthogonal view, uh, isometric, trimetric, whatever. Uh, and we have the ability of, of the scale there. Uh, where we turn that on at, we go into our uh, options, switch over to our document properties tab, and then we go down to um, view labels, expand that out, and grab uh, orthographic. Uh, so it's this check mark uh, right up top here that turns that on, uh, and then we do have the ability of configuring that. We could actually change the standard, so we could say, okay, want a, uh, a colon there, and I want to uh, put it in brackets and you could decide where the placement would be. So I'll go and accept that. Again, this is something you'd want to set up on your template, store that template out. So now we can see that the, the scale uh, uh, updated there. All right, uh, let's go back to another drawing, our first drawing here. Uh, let's go and grab drawing one there. Oh, looks like I didn't save that with uh, the auto arrange, so we can just select that real quick and auto arrange those one more time for us love how quick that is. Uh, I've been doing drawings for years, so I love, love the ability of doing that. And yeah, there's always some fine tuning that you might have to do, but not as much as you used to. All right, so dual dimensions for chamfers. Uh, so I have one in here. Essentially, if you haven't used the, the chamfer, uh, I'll go ahead and show that, putting that back in. I'll go and grab chamfer dimension from below the smart dimension, click on the angle itself, and then the, the face that you're dimensioning to bring it off to the side. Uh, that's how you drop in a chamfer dimension. Um, and again, whether you have the it aligned or not, it's based off your standard. But let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the dual dimensions uh, capability here. So we're going to go into our options, document properties again. So a lot of the stuff we're covering today is uh, document specific stuff. So. All right, so we're going to go into dimensions. We'll go and come down to chamfer. And we have the ability of doing dual dimensions. Uh, we can show the units, uh, so we could actually have that show up. So if we wanted inch and millimeters, uh, this will change when you change your units. Uh, so you could decide to have that on there. I always think it's a good idea to convey the information as correctly as possible. And then we have the ability of, of changing its location, top, bottom, uh, right, or left, depending on how you want the formatting. Uh, here we can see our, our positioning, so I'll go and just switch that here to a different mode here. Go and accept that, and then we've got our dual dimension, our dual units on our chamfer dimension there. Okay. Let's go on to the next slide here. Alright, so uh, this one, uh, we've got uh, um, multi-bodies. Uh, if you deal with uh, more than one body in a single part file, uh, we now have the ability of quickly uh, hiding the uh, the second body. Um, one of the workarounds that I used to do was uh, uh, show the um, uh, the part on on a uh, uh, drawing, uh, and then I'd go through and, and hide all the edges. I'm sure there's probably some of you that have done that out there. So um, this will definitely uh, make your life a little bit easier. And um, then the other item uh, that we want to cover here is uh, um, the ability of saving uh, 3D drawing views. Uh, 3D drawing views has been around a while, but you couldn't real easily save it. Uh, there was a service pack that was there for a while that you could, but then it disappeared. And then it's, uh, So now it's actually 
uh, here for good uh, to the, the ability to, to store them. I'll show you how to, to do that too. It's actually quite easy to uh, to work with them. All right, so let's go and uh, uh, bring it up in SolidWorks. So let's do the hide bodies uh, option here first. All right, let's uh, let's go and close some stuff out here so we can uh, get everything cleaned up. that anymore. Uh, we don't need that part. Alright, so let's go and take a look at our next one here. And let's go and open up the part file. Uh, for this example, I just did it really quick. Uh, all I did was I uh, had a, uh, a single body uh, and then I did a uh, body copy move. Uh, for those that haven't used 2010 or 11 yet. Uh, they've added two new tabs, uh, data migration and direct editing. Um, these are new tabs that have some useful tools on there. Move copy bodies has been put on there. All these tools are av still available from the insert menu and features. It's just a, a faster way of getting to them. All right, so I made a copy of that body. We'll go and switch back over to the drawing sheet. Um, so I've got my view. Doesn't matter what orientation, I just did this uh, ISO just so it was real easy. All I have to do is right click over the view uh, or the, over the body itself, uh, come down to the show hide option, and this is that option that I was saying that I was using before was uh, show hidden edges. So I'd go around and hide all the edges to get rid of that body. Uh, but then we have this new option to, to hide the body right there. And this doesn't affect the, uh, the part file either, it's just for this drawing view. Sometimes you have to do that for clarity because you got too much clutter going on. So that gets rid of the view uh, of that second body. If I want to bring it back, this is how you go about doing that. You right click, go down to properties, and I switch over to the hide show bodies. Uh, highlight the one that I'm wanting to get rid of. Uh, I'll go and delete that out of the list and I'll go and accept it. And it brings that part back. Let's go to the next one here, uh, 3D Views. Let's get that file open. Alright, so let's do... this drawing here. And then we'll be doing a few things with this. Alright, so um, I'm going to use this bottom uh, view. Uh, started out as just a, an isometric, um, but uh, I'll switch over to my view layout. Um, I've gone and, and added a, a 3D drawing view button. Um, probably advise you guys doing that. Um, actually, I'll probably show you that real quick here just so you can see how to do that. I'll right click over uh, my toolbar, come all the way down to the bottom here, go and go customize gives me my customization, switch over my commands tab, and down to view, and again we have this button right there, so I could just take that, drag it up to whatever toolbar I want it on, and go and accept it. So that's how I got that there. Uh, if you don't want to go that route, uh, I would go up to my view menu, come down to modify, and it shows up down there at the uh, bottom of modify. Alright, so let's go and fire that up here. Uh, Note that I did have the view pre-selected. That's probably always a good idea. Uh, I'm in a rotation mode, so I can just take that, rotate it to whatever orientation I needed. Um, I can switch over to the, a zoom, maybe look at a, a particular area, uh, and then pan in so that it gets uh, exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, and the ability to actually save it now. So I do want to click on the little foppy and get that stored, give it a name. have that stored. Uh, the zoom, obviously it wants to fit everything on the side. Uh, you'd want to do a detail to, to store the view, but that does show up as uh, new views now, so I can come back and define something else for that same view. Okay. Alright, so that's that one. Let's go on to the next uh, set here. Alright, so we've got a few items on this page. Um, We've got uh, whole table tags, uh, the ability of renaming those tags. I think uh, a few of you have probably called in and uh, 
asked for that to be an enhancement. Uh, uh, if you remember when he deleted a tag, um, there was no way to, to get rid of that gap in the sequence there. Um, I think we had a few workarounds, but uh, this will definitely make you guys happy. Uh, whole, uh, whole table had the ability of doing uh, dual dimensions uh, or dual units there. Uh, we have the ability of merging and unmerging cells now. Uh, there is a slight little trick to that, and I'll show you that. Uh, we can do it with uh, uh, bill of material tables. You can do that with um, uh, whole tables like what we're doing here. Uh, with this one um, and let's see the last time we've got the ability of fit text and notes um, this has been around uh, for a little bit not not that long but uh, the big thing is that we have the ability of creating it or doing the fit text during the creation not after the fact all right so let's get back to uh, SOLIDWORKS here all right so our first item is the renumbering uh, I'll go and zoom in on my, uh, my table here so we can see it uh, so as you can see, we've got uh, E1, E2, and E3. This is all referencing the numbers that are next to the holes on our on our part. Uh, I'll go and select that row. Uh, right click, go delete, and go and grab row there. Okay. So that gets rid of it, but now we have our gap in the, the sequence there. So all I have to do is just right click over any um, cell. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit for it to, to catch up to you. So I did notice that it does take a moment for me to get my right click uh, and then I have the option to renumber all tags so I select that give it a moment and again it takes a little bit for it to update uh, but then it updates the information in the table also updates the information on our uh, part file as well all right so next item uh, let's see we've got uh, dual units um, where that shows up at I'm going to show you uh, we're going to go into our options, go into our document properties, down to our tables, and I'll go and grab whole table. And again, we have that ability of doing the uh, dual dimension display there. And again, you do need to make sure that you've got your units set the way you want. and where you want those positioned at. All right, uh, merging of cells. You can kind of see that I've grouped uh, these cells already, um, mostly because these I sorted the table so that uh, uh, it had the, the common, common sizes together. Um, if I select on a cell, uh, you'll see the unmerge option showing up top there. Okay. So we can unmerge them and then we'll get our individual cells here. Uh, if I want to select them to merge them together again, this is the, the little bit of the trick to it. Uh, if I select the first cell, hold control, and I pick the individual cells, um, I do not get the, the option to merge it. Uh, the trick to it is you have to select the first cell, hold your left mouse button down, and, and drag select uh, to get the cells. When doing so, then you get that option to merge it. So there's uh, something that they ended up doing with the, the setup. So I'm going to go and grab all the, the ones that are the same size, go and merge them together. Uh, notice that it does tell you or gives you this option here to uh, uh, merge cells uh, and keep the uppermost data so it does kind of rearrange the data based off of what the top cell is. Okay. So if you had a bunch of blank cells it might be easier to, to merge them together than having to, uh, to manually put them together. Alright, the last one that we had on that list, and zoom back out here again, and I'll switch over to my annotations tab, go and grab note, and uh, it's nothing more than the fact that we have our right, uh, left justified, center justified, uh, right align, uh, and then we have that fit to text, so they gave us the ability of turning that on, um, and this is essentially fitting it into the, the box uh, shape there, so it gives you good spacing makes it look uh, uh, real clean. 
uh, we've had the ability of taking a note that was already created and then turning that on. But this is the um, the ability of doing it uh, from the, the get go. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's get back to our slides here. Uh, all right. So we've got the ability of uh, patterning notes, uh, linear uh, circular pattern. Uh, this is just to speed up the operation of putting additional notes on there. Uh, it doesn't update the information, uh, meaning that if I started up here at the top, pattern it in a circular pattern, um, all I had to do was grab an edge there and, and it did the circular pattern. Um, but notice that I would still need to modify the, the, the note itself. Uh, once you drop them, they're just regular notes. Uh, don't have the ability of updating your pattern. And you'd have to repattern it again if you forgot the number of quantity. Uh, another item here, have the ability of uh, showing uh, uh, the uh, dimension unit. So if we want to actually have the unit show up next to the dimension, uh, this might be huge for you guys because if you're constantly working with uh, inch and millimeter or metric uh, drawings all the time, it might be better to start putting the units on there so you can kind of um, keep, uh, keep track of which uh, dimensions you're working on. Uh, and then let's see this next item. Uh, this one I thought uh, was kind of interesting. And this is something that I probably could have used uh, when I was back out in the field. Uh, but uh, if you have an assembly or a part file and you do a uh, uh, hidden lines uh, remove or hidden lines visible uh, view of that assembly. So if you did a shaded with edges, you'd end up with that on your drawing. But then if you do a uh, hidden lines removed or hidden lines visible, uh, you can actually have the edges take on the color of whatever the part files are. And this is real useful if you're needing to identify the differences between the edges and, and where the different parts start and end, because sometimes it's hard to uh, discern the, the differences there. Uh, so let's go and uh, open, uh, open up a uh, part here. Actually, in fact, let's go and just do that with this one. Well, in fact, I've already done that <laughs> with this drawing. If I took this uh, one view, switch it over to a different uh, shade with edges. You see that uh, we get the uh, uh, the dashed lines and the solid lines. Um, but if I normal behavior would come in as the, uh, the black there, let me show you where that shows up at here. So we're kind of working reverse off of our list that we were just on. All right, so document properties. Um, we go over to detailing. And Let's see, it is this guy right here, the use model color for HL, R, HLV and drawing. So if I turn that off and go OK, it goes back to my traditional black. Yep. Oh, let's see. Go and go back here again and again detail. I'll go and turn that back on again. All right, so let's jump back up to the top here, the patterning. That's always a useful item. All right, so if I go through, I get rid of my ones that I've already patterned here. I go and select my note. Um, I, I like to select my edges ahead of time. Uh, and we'll go up to our insert, down to annotations, and we have the linear or circular um, note there. Okay. And hence the reason that I did the pre-select. I selected my number or my note, held control, picked the edge. Uh, it uh, already does all the population for me. Uh, you could pick the node and then come in, uh, add the, the, the detail item, add the, uh, the point there to, to rotate it around. Uh, you can also increase the spacing if you needed to. So if you had more than four locations that you needed to place that on, go and drop it. Uh, and then from there, I just go through and go and put in my, my other units. So maybe that's 90, maybe this is uh, 15, whatever. The, the note might be. It might be for more for the whole location, not the angle at, at which we're placing this. Okay. And let's see, our next one here, uh, the ability of doing uh, units for uh, uh, dimensions. All right. So yeah, you can kind of see it. I've already dropped in a um, dimension in there. So I'll get rid of that. And so if I bring it off to the side, drop it in the middle, have that unit show up. Those turn on, we go into our options here, 
document properties again. And again, depending on what you're in, um, you know, if you're in diameter, come here, show units. Uh, if I go at a, to angle, um, oh, let's see, they haven't added that one for angle because, of course, it's always going to tell you the units. Uh, chamfer, we saw that uh, uh, earlier. Uh, let's see, linear, show units. So it depends on if you want to turn it on for specific types of dimension. You could leave that on or off. Uh, so again, if I go back to diameter, turn that option off, you'll see the, uh, well, for any new items that's created. Um, so they've uh, uh, added some new um, items to, to sort of start supporting the uh, ASME uh, 14.5.2009. Um, some of the items that they've added, uh, leaders uh, to datum symbols. Um, so you, when you insert a datum, you have the ability of doing uh, C leader or no leader. So that's come in there. Uh, and then also the, uh, the datum symbol uh, to dimensions. Uh, that one... I uh, don't have an image for it uh, or, or drawing set up for it, but I can essentially, if I had a dimension, I could actually have the datum coming off right off the, uh, the leader of the uh, dimension there. Okay. Uh, next item here, uh, geometric tolerancing blocks. Uh, uh, new leader option added uh, when inserting uh, geometric tolerancing blocks uh, all over. So I have the ability of it automatically dropping that onto the uh, uh, the elbow there. I'll show you where that is here in a moment. Uh, new materials definitions also available including the ability of uh, diameter and square symbols while applying flatness tolerance. Uh, so that's uh, new there so you can do the uh, material definitions. Uh, and they've also added a few new symbols uh, to the symbols library. Uh, unequal uh, uh, disposed profile. Uh, independent symbol uh, and then continuous uh, uh, feature. So if you're needing to show that something's uh, um, going behind something, but yet it continues on uh, in, f uh, in the background behind some other feature that's in the foreground. Yep. All right. So uh, let's go and bring up uh, maybe one or well, we'll look for the uh, the leader there, and then I'll see if I can find the uh, symbols there. All right. So let's go and switch back to our drawing here. And let's see. Actually, let's open up another drawing that we had here already. All right, so if I got in my GD and T, um, again, if I needed to modify, I could just double click on it, get it, it all set up. Um, so if I select the uh, uh, GD and T uh, note there, uh, I'll come over here and there's the uh, all over leader. Uh, so that shows up there. Uh, so now if I need to move that, I know some of us were having to add that and then move it if our leader changed in position. So now uh, it, it becomes a, a fixture there. Uh, and let's see if we can find uh, some of the other items, the, uh, the new symbols that they've added. Uh, again, I'm just going to do a note for simplicity, simplicity's sake here. I'll go and go over to my add symbol. And I believe, uh, let's see, let's check geometric tolerancing there. Uh, independent. Well, some of these I, I've been uh, away from GD and T for a while, so I've forgotten how some of these are, are grouped. So I apologize for not knowing right where they're at. There either. Oh, my mistake. It may not be in here. It may only be when we're actually creating a, a tolerance there. So, um, yeah. Well, uh, take note that that they are in there and they're they're new available for you to to get to. Okay, uh, let's go and wrap this up. Uh, I got one final slide for you guys here. Uh, just a, a quick reminder uh, that we have some more webcasts coming up uh, through the, the next uh, couple of months here. Um, 
sometimes we will squeeze in some additional webcasts in there, so check back uh, often for the calendar. Um, we will also archive these uh, webcasts as well, too. Um, but uh, do check uh, for the archive, too, if you wanted to, to review one of the options that we've gone through. Okay, and that is it for today. So if you guys have any questions, you can go and uh, chat them in the uh, go to webinar. Uh, but other than that, uh, um, keep on drafting, and uh, we'll see you back here next time.